Welcome back to Private Pilot Ground School. In this video we'll be talking about aviation weather reports and how to read them. Normal weather reports aren't sufficient enough for flying. So this is where aviation weather reports come in. And they're usually coded so you have to learn how to decode them and read them in order to be able to use them. You can find aviation weather at aviationweather.gov. On the main page there's a map with little circles on it and those circles are weather stations. So if you move your mouse and click on one of them, you'll be able to see what the weather is at that station. Now what we're looking for are METARs, and that stands for Meteorological Terminal Air Report. And those are aviation weather reports that come out every hour, and they're the current weather at the station. So if we go down and click on the METARs, and then type in the airport codes or the weather station codes, it'll bring up a page of the weather at all the stations that you typed in. And here we go, here's a list of weather. Now it looks kind of alien, but we'll go step by step and figure out what exactly all this means. The first part of the weather report is the airport or the weather station code. This happens to be Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport. The next little block here is the day and then time that the report came out. So this came out on the 16th at 2153 Zulu. And you might as well get used to Zulu time because that's standard aviation time that we use. Next part is the wind direction and speed. So we have winds coming from 150 degrees at 14 knots. So in other words, it's from the southeast at 14 knots. And it's always going to be in knots. Next part is the visibility in statute miles. And this happens to be 10 statute miles of visibility. The next little section is the cloud coverage. It will tell you how much of the sky is covered and what the height of the clouds are. So in this case, it's scattered clouds at 30,000. And the number is in hundreds of feet, so you just add two zeros to the end of it, and you should be able to figure out what the altitude is. So in this case, it's 30,000. This is the temperature and dew point in degrees Celsius. So we have the temperature of 15 degrees and the dew point of 4 degrees Celsius. And the next part is the altimeter setting. So when you go fly, you'll set this into your what we call Colesman window on your altimeter in the airplane. So 2968 is what would, you would set in there. And the very last part is the remarks section. And this is not necessarily pertinent information, but it's things that could be useful to know. So the AO2 means that it's an automated station and the O2 means that it can tell you the difference between precipitation so like snow, rain, etc. The next little section is sea level pressure in millibars and if you had to decode that that would be 1005.4 millibars if you're really interested. The very last part is temperature and dew point to the nearest tenth of a degree if you really had to be that precise. So the way it's split up is the first four digits is the temperature and the last four digits is the dew point. Uh, now the first number of the first four digits in each case is either a zero or a one. If it's a zero, it's a positive temperature. If it's a one, it's a negative temperature. So in this case, 0150, it's plus 15.0 degrees Celsius. And the dew point is plus 03.9 degrees Celsius. So that's pretty much it. There's a whole bunch of variations of weather conditions that can come out, but this is the general format you'll see not only in the United States, but also all over the world. So we'll go ahead and take a look at a couple more examples now. Believe it or not, you can read most of these weather reports. I'm not sure where some of these are from, but these are just examples to expand what you already know. So we'll start with the top one. That one's from Portland, Oregon, also on the 16th came out at 2153 Zulu. The winds are 190, so from the south, at 7 knots, with 10 miles of visibility. The clouds are scattered at 2100, so you add two zeros to the end, broken at 3000, and broken at 25000. So there are three cloud layers. The first one scattered, then broken, and then another broken one. Temperature is 10 degrees, dew point is 5 degrees Celsius, and the altimeter is 3008. And we've got the next one. Uh, I'm not sure where that's from. 16th of the month, 2244 Zulu. It's an automated station. Sometimes it'll say that right there. Winds are 140 at 12, so from the southeast. One mile visibility. 
minus means light, SN stands for snow, so there's light snow at that airport. And here's a new one, VV at 1000, that stands for vertical visibility. In other words, the sensor couldn't figure out where the clouds are, but it could see 1000 feet up. So it said vertical visibility is 1000. Temperature, minus 2, and dew point minus 4 degrees Celsius. And the altimeter is 30, 34. All right, so this next one, um, 16th of the month, 2240 Zulu, automated system. When you see all zeros in the winds column, it means that the winds are calm. Uh, visibility is one and a quarter statute mile. Light snow, BR stands for mist or baby rain, if you want to remember it that way. Broken clouds at 3,100 feet, overcast at 4,200 feet. Temperature minus 11, dew point minus 13, and the altimeter is 3053. All right, moving on, um, 16th of the month, 2244 Zulu, automated system. Winds are variable at six knots, one quarter mile visibility, light snow, and FZFG is freezing fog, which is kind of easy to figure out. Vertical visibility is 100 feet, so the clouds are pretty close to the ground. Minus four temperature, minus five Celsius is the dew point, and 2981 is the altimeter. Uh, San Francisco, that one I do know. On the 16th at 2156 Zulu, winds, now this is a little different, winds are 270, so they're from the west, at 20, gusting to 28 knots. The visibility is 10, statute miles, a few clouds at 2100, temperature 16, dew point 5, and 3006 on the altimeter. Um, here we see something slightly different in the remarks. And all it tells you is the peak wind, or the highest wind gust, that happened to be from the direction of 280 at 28 knots, and that happened at 2150 Zulu. So the report came out at 2156 Zulu, and the wind happened five minutes before that. That's basically all it is. Now this last one, I've got to warn you, is not from the United States, so they use slightly different units. Still, it came out on the 16th at 22 Zulu, winds are 360 at 12 knots, 1,000 meters visibility, plus TSRA stands for heavy, minus was light, plus is heavy, thunderstorms is TS and rain, so heavy rains and thunderstorms, uh, scattered clouds 1,700, few at 2,000, then there's a CB at the end, and that stands for cumulonimbus clouds, or puffy rain clouds is what it translates to. Broken clouds at 20,000, temperature and dew point is 26, and the altimeter setting, since this is not the United States, it's in millibars, and that's 1,005 millibars. And so these are METARs, or hourly weather reports. And if you're ever not sure what a code means, you can just type it into Google followed by the word METAR, and then in the search results, something will pop up that will translate it for you. Also, when you're typing in the airport or the weather station codes on aviationweather.gov, you can pick translated instead of raw, which means they will take the weather and they will actually translate it into human readable format. Um, so while you're getting used to how to read weather, that's a good way to compare and see if you're actually understanding it correctly. That's it for now. Thanks a lot for sticking around all the way to the end. Come back and check out the next video that will be on aviation forecasts. It's a very similar process to what we just did with METARs. So check that out. And as always, thanks for watching. Have fun, fly safe, and always keep learning. See you next time.